Hello, I'm Robbie Fowler, and you're watching Redman TV. Uh, right, who we need to sign? That's a small matter of signing buskets. Just signing buskets. There you go. There you go. Come on, let's go. There you go, Rogers. Um, yeah, okay, we're going to move on then um, to talk about Liverpool versus West Ham in the Premier League. If you're joining us on YouTube, don't forget to click the subscribe button. See you then early on this week. Yeah. No reminders necessary. I'm not going to hammer it home this week. One reminder necessary. One reminder. Well, I remind. It's quite an agenda for a reason. He's got in big letters. Subscribe button. Make them say them subscribe, yeah. you dickhead. <laughs> Paul, um, how many times can we fit the word subscribe into this conversation? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Chris, and I'm not subscribing to this kind of conversation. <laughs> anyway, um, let's talk about the match. Um, Dad, West Ham coming to Anfield and their wonderful Allardycean tactics. Um, Something wrong with the combination of wonderful and Aladdin. <laughs> it doesn't quite. Sure, the massive oxymoron at the start of the show there. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we've said time and time again on this show this season, Liverpool struggle against physical sides who play basically horrible Aladdin style football. Um, who better to exploit such tactics than the man himself, Sam Aladdin? I mean, obviously, he's not going to play up front. I don't think, uh, even with Allardyce there, that West Ham are like Stoke. No. You know, I still think that somewhere in the back of their psyche is we must play football yeah. or else the fans will lynch And blow bubbles. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, so I, but I think Allardyce will come definitely to try and keep it as tight as possible. He just, we've, he's been, I mean, Mikey, time and time again we've come up against Allardyce sides that we people like get this idea that we should go and steamroll them but he, he's, he's consistently proven a difficult opponent to say the least yes I think West Ham I mean, in general I mean if you look at it I mean I know they went down but West, West Ham are a Premier League team aren't they at the end of the day but they are this Not is a game just... taking place in the Premier League yeah dickhead <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we shouldn't on. you know they're a it's the, uh, <laughs> A well established hard, isn't it? Premier League team, apart from the season where they went down and came back up again. Yeah. But it shouldn't be, so we shouldn't be steamrolling anyone. But if you look at West Ham as an Allardyce team, I don't think they play in a true Allardycean style. Yeah. Do you like that Allardyce? I do, I, I'm a big yeah. fan. I can't remember, I invented it on Neil Akins from now until about. But we I'm came from behind to beat them, if you yeah. remember, away from home with no striker. With Joe Cole. And John Joe Shelby. And John Joe Shelby. The, sort of. Yeah, the mobility of a double decker bus on the front. <laughs> on that day, with, no still wheels. Them, with no wheels. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, as you say, I think, I mean, because he's not, if you listen to phone ins, and I know they're never a true reflection, there isn't 100%, I mean, no club's got 100% backing for anyone. Allardyce does is very divisive amongst the, the, the West Ham fans because, as, as has been said, they like to play good football, and Allardyce doesn't do that. No, yeah. Allardyce has got his way of getting 60 points or 50 points in the Premier League and surviving and he's quite happy with that and there's not many managers that can sort of change that. David Moyes to a certain extent has gone gone about Everton in that way. He's taken five years not playing Allardyce in football but the way he played was very tight, very compact and then now his team's expanded over the last couple and been able to play football I think a little better. Mm -hmm. Sam Allardyce hasn't got that in his locker to change. Mm. Or I think it is down to what your dad said. I think said. he'd like to. I think he'd love to play with the target man but his problem is his target man's only halfway line half the time and mine is passes. Yeah. <laughs> Andy Carroll. <laughs> or in the stand as he will be against us. As he will yeah. be, which uh, based on his form the last few weeks is a very, very good thing. Very, very happy that we put that clause in. Or that, I think it's a Premier League rule, isn't it? But um, I because I did get a little bit worried. I forgot all about it until I got Dave's stats and he reminded me. Like I did think, ah shit. You know, it would have been typical if we'd sold Carroll. It would have been typical that he's just hit this this purple patch of form and he'd, turn, he'd rock up to Anfield and b between spraying 40 yard Hollywood passes, uh, he would knock a few knock a few in as well. So very good. Um, just quickly then, uh, this week's trivia question. How many goals have been scored in our last five Premier League meetings with West Ham? The answer will be at the end of this show. Um, Paul remembers. If I remember. <laughs> I remember last week, not the week before, uh, oh, well, two weeks before. Um, right, okay then, 
Um, Kev Nolan, we're going to do a Danger Man focus on. Uh, we'll bring some stats first, but uh, I we always talk about him, don't we, we Chris? And how he's he, he's, he's, a, he's a strange one. He, his ability to to crop up in the right place in the right time makes him such a threat. But I mean, if you were a, if you were like one of the if you're a kid who goes ape shit for FIFA and footy manager. You probably don't like Kevin Nolan, but he is such an effective player. He is, yeah, isn't he? In the same way that Kevin Davis has been his career as well. He just, as you say, perfect. He pops up in the right place at the right time. He's big, strong, old school centre forward, really. I don't think he was ever supposed to be a forward, was he? He was meant to be a midfielder. Yeah, yeah, centre mid. Defensive mid come attack, centre mid come attack and mid, and he's ended up as a. Doesn't play up front for West Ham. Well, he, he, he's one of them. He likes. He, does, he, does he know if he play? Does he play behind the front? He plays in the field. Well, they. Well, sh- shut up then, Chris. And he's not scoring. He plays. Not scoring as many goals as he used to for Newcastle. He's always been a bit hot and cold, hasn't he? Though he, he has. He's been off for a while, hasn't he? Yeah. Like weekend was his first game back. I've noticed something that he's done, and I think it's his, his proximity to the south. He's got a very sensible haircut. Mm. He's gone. He's gone for. He's gone for a bit of a Scotty Park, which I think is a little bit worrying. I think he needs to get back to Liverpool and get himself a, get himself a crew cut calf. Have a word. Um, let's have a quick look at uh, some normal stats then. Uh, he started twenty seven games, got six goals, two assists, created twenty two chances. He's also got twenty two shots on target. Um, shooting accuracy of 52%, chance conversion of 14%, and a clear cut chance conversion of 20%, which is nothing special, but then he's not a centre forward, as, as I mean, not. A, a, contrary to what Chris might have you believe. He did uh, used to play up front, though, didn't he? No, he's just, you think that because he, he scores his goals from inside the box. Yeah. Fair enough. If you if you care to back Chris up on this, maybe maybe Chris is right and Mike's wrong. If if that's the case, let us know in the comment section. Underneath, um, quick question: uh, we, uh, Looking at the Premier League table, West Ham are in eleventh, three points off of tenth, three points, three points off the top half, but only six points off the relegation zone. That position of the table, you think safe, safe and sound, but six points? Would you say they're still in a relegation battle, mate? No, I think because there's teams below them. I think that all them teams were on have got to play each other, so there's a lot of them taking points off each other, and yeah. West Ham, I think, are, they're just on the right side of it. I think you've still got, I think from Stoke down, you have got to, you could be looking over the shoulder, so you've got like Stoke, Norwich, Sunderland, Ful- um, Fulham have gone up now, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, Fulham are um, yeah. Um, Maybe you depend on whether Mad Paolo frightens Sunderland so much that they all start winning games. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be very interesting to see, but we're going to talk a little bit about Paolo Di Canio on the subscriber show, which is a, a massively, massive tangent for a Liverpool show. We're gonna do it nonetheless. Um, yeah, I, I, the thing is though, it's the nature of the Premier League, isn't it? Just that, and I mean, because it's astonishing when you consider that the entire bottom half of the Premier League with seven games to go, any one of those sides could get relegated. That's it. It is literally because, and it's the same at the top of the league. Anybody can beat anybody. So they're all taking points off big teams and they're all getting beaten by the others. It's a strong competitive league and that's why we love it. But it's weird because people say it's the, the when people say this is the shittest Premier League, you know, of, of all time. Yeah, I understand it from a from a a neutral media, what have you perspective. Yeah, Man United have pissed it and it's really it's really annoying because there's been no challenge at the top. End of the the worst team they've had for a long time. Well exactly. Um, but as you say, you know, you're looking at a league where no team is guaranteed a win against against anyone. I think that I think that's a good thing, apart from the fact that it means that we've been beaten by loads of shit. I teams think the, we should have proven it is, or the yardstick for it is, if you look at um, the old theory that forty points sees you safe. Someone could easily finish with forty points this season and go down. Yeah. Because if you got Villa on thirty points with seven games to go. They could quite easily finish on 40 and the teams above them pick up points in the down. Yeah. Um, quick look at the form guide then, West Ham. Let's look at their away form. Uh, four defeats, a win and a defeat from the last six. Our home form, conversely, three wins, a defeat and then two more wins. We're in the overall form table, we're fourth in the form table compared to their 12th. So obviously... Um, we should be com- I mean, we should. That, by all means, we should. We should be confident going to this game. We're in good form at Anfield. They're not a good side. Their talismanic Jordy centre forward isn't available. We should be. We should be looking at three points here. Yeah. Well, it, it says a lot about our season that we should all be saying, "Yeah, we're going to murder them. No, not a you know, not a problem. We're going to score lots of goals. It's an easy game." But how many times have we sat here? Full of the joys of spring because we just won a game, thinking we're going to tonk the next team, and then we come away. 
and we've surprisingly been beaten 3 1 at home. Someone scores <laughs> a well, the out of nowhere, our, our game plan so falls a bit. I'm yeah. a bit wary, but we, yeah, we should easily beat West Ham, we know. Great. Okay, then, um, let's look ahead to how Liverpool are going to line up. Chris, big question is that, you know, obviously we've. We, well, what my dad said on the on the on the show earlier, we almost hit upon our best team at the weekend. Daniel Sturridge. Yeah, I know, and I I got to agree with your dad. I think we play better football without him at the moment. I think Coutinho and Suarez are linking up so well. I don't think you can drop down in at the moment. So I fully agree with your dad. If it drops you up, I'm going to riot. <laughs> There'll be a riot. There is. If you if you're watching this on YouTube, you've not seen the fact that the the, the, the surprise show that this has led in from. Uh, we had a bit of a Jordan Henderson loving. I do suggest you join in on the Redman TV if you get a set for Redman TV dot um, Yeah, I know. I agree, Mike. I, I don't see why. I think we've hit upon. And we said this at the Christmas. We hit upon our best midfield there in Lucas Gerrard and Henderson, and it would annoy me. But I I wonder whether. We were talking maybe about how Southampton was a mistake of playing two in midfield. It's whether Brendan Rodgers will think, well, I'm at home. Maybe I can get away with doing it because we tried it against Spurs and outfield. No reason why he won't think he can do it against West Ham. The worrying thing about the Southampton game was that he made that mistake tactically, and yet he didn't change it at half time. Yeah, he just he swapped out Allen for, for Henderson and and thought that was okay yeah. for Lucas, and it it was um, and it was no better. Yeah. Or slightly better, but not enough <laughs> to win the game. Yeah. And you know, you would hope that if he actually did make the mistake of thinking he could play four forwards, that if it was going wrong, he would very, very quickly change it back. Mm. You know, I, I've got a feeling Sturridge will come back in for this game. I don't quite know how how we're going to chew on him in. I would hope that Sturridge and Coutinho at the moment are buying for the one spot. You know, I mean, not necessarily the same position, yeah. but you know the. the Suarez to Downing and either Coutinho or Sturridge and you know at the moment I prefer Coutinho because of what we've said earlier about the way he can pass the ball and the way he moves into play and all yeah. the rest but you know he's 20 maybe he needs a rest or whatever Sturridge is a perfect man to come in I think the thing with Sturridge he's been struggling hasn't he since he's come with this thigh strain yeah. and I think the last two games he played he looked out of sorts Tottenham and Southampton he really didn't look like he did but he'd come back from the injury again yeah. so I think you've got to look at it on that and I think you know you don't want to take any risks with him before the end of the season. I think it's good having a centre forward on the bench. <laughs> you can bring it on. <laughs> having an actual centre forward yeah. on the bench, it's astonishing. Yeah. It really, you know what I was thinking about the bench before uh, Aston Villa? And the bench was, by all accounts, pretty shit. But just having Sturridge on there, you know that if it all goes tits up, you've got a guy who's going to come off the bench there and he's probably going to, you've got, you've got the ability to score. I goal. think the idea there was if we were 2 0 up, you can bring storage on and give him half an hour or something like that. Do you know what I mean? I, I'd love him to do that at uh, West Ham. You know, we, we go in and get a couple of goals and he brings storage on to give him his game time. Yeah. Rather than being in the position where you're bringing him on because you need a goal, mm. uh, which doesn't do him any favours or gives him any confidence. Does well, I don't, I don't mind. He's a centre forward. He's proven we you know he can score. He should be able to come in regardless of the circumstances. But what I, what it, what's great is, is that, you know, the week before, we started against Southampton. We put all our attacking players on the pitch. Shot that load at the beginning of the game. Exactly. We had Ibe and and Shelby. You know what I mean to bring on. Oh shit! You know what I mean. You just you keep it so cool at bay. Yeah. You, 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 you take any one of those players off the pitch, and you're the opposition defence. You think brilliant. Sounds, you know what I mean? You, you, your job isn't going to get any more difficult from there until full time. So it's good to have like that even option. Even going back before Sturridge was injured though with the thigh strain. The one thing that Sturridge sort of did better than Suarez, I would say, is he got in behind. Yeah. But with Coutinho playing balls now, Suarez is doing that a hell of a lot. More. You don't need to have that pace in order to get on the end of it because Coutinho can find you anyway. The key master, Philip Coutinho. <laughs> yeah, there he first. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's have some let's have some score predictions from you, Mike. Three 0 Liverpool. Dad. Two one. Okay. Yeah. Two 0 Liverpool. Very nice, very nice indeed. A lucky nil. clean sheet. A lucky clean sheet. <laughs> <laughs> let's go for a big and let's have. Uh, uh, we do, we're doing it again, now we? We're getting sucked in. No, you've you got go our home, go on our home form. Apart from the Tottenham game, you take the Tottenham game and the West Brom game out. How many clean sheets have we kept at home? So I'm fully you? justified in saying 4 0, yeah, what you're saying. Absolutely. Fucking hate them, I'm going with it. Thanks, Mike. Uh, let us know your score predictions in the comment section underneath and how you think we'll start. I, I, I mean, I, I'm just going to say I, I think we'll start 
exactly the same as we started against Aston Villa. Although I honestly oh, wouldn't yeah. be su- <laughs> <laughs> I honestly wouldn't be surprised though if we did go back to 44. So let us know how you think with Pusher. Does Daniel Sturridge get into your starting eleven? Answer the question and give us your starting elevens in the comments. Uh, before we go, I just want to give a final plug to our brand new show, The Resi's Review, starring me and Mr. Atkinson over there. Oh. Um, we're gonna be trialing it for the next few weeks, see how people get on. If you're interested in knowing about Liverpool's reserves, there's a great interview with uh, Alex Inglethorpe as well after the defeat against Spurs fantastically open and honest really refreshing actually so do check that out so we're going to be tweaking the, the concept a little bit try and get it right and if it's popular enough and people get, gets enough views and people are interested then we're going to keep it up and up and take it into next season so do check that out um other than that yeah thanks very much for watching if you're watching this on youtube we'll see you later if you want to see more of us we're on the redmentv.com free for the first month if you're on the subscriber show in part two we're going to have picture of the week we're going to be talking about paolo di canio the premier league fascist um we're going to be answering some of your questions and ask the redman and this week's quick fire round so we hope to see you there Tara. Uh, yes, I did forget to answer the trivia question again. Um, what was the answer, anyone? 20. 20. The answer was 20. I love how you got him to fill up again without knowing the answer. As well. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Not, and now, good night. You're following the five P's there, are you? <laughs>